Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. Okay, so tonight we're going to be working on the original NES. Okay, so basically the problem is with a lot of these older ones, you can see this one's all faded, but I got to fix this one anyway. Um, you turn the power button on and this red light blinks. And you sit there and you, you take the game, you put it up to your mouth and you blow on it, you stick it back in, and then it works for a little bit. And then you're halfway through a game, and then guess what? It starts blinking again. Well, guess what we're going to do? We are going to fix that problem. So, first things first, take your Nintendo, tip it upside down, and there's a nice little screw tray right there. All right, I'm going to check the film real quick and be sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Beautiful. So the six screws, two on each corner and two in the middle. Basically, we're just going to just take those out. The regular Phillips screws, nothing fancy, no special tools. Okay. Just gonna walk all the way around it, zap them out. I fix. I have a lot of Nintendos. I've got over 400 games, and um, I love the original Nintendo. And it's pretty cool because back in the 80s, okay, I'll show you a couple things. Back in the 80s, if you had a hit movie, you had a game. Back to the Future, hit movie. They used to show the uh, Three Stooges on uh, Channel 38. Three Stooges. Uh, we had, like, baseball legends like uh, Roger Clemens had his own game. So, if you were a big to-do, like, um, Top Gun or any of those, um, those movies... You had, uh, like, Knight Rider, the TV show Knight Rider. They had its own, um, what do you call it there? Its own uh, game. I I've got so many games, it's not even funny. So you got Top Gun, you got Goonies, you got, uh, what do you call it? There? You got so many of them, it's, it's not even funny. So if you had a uh, Michael Jordan and, uh, Michael Jordan versus Larry Bird, there was another one. Um, just stuff like that. You had Mike Tyson's Punch Out, um, George Foreman. You, you had them all. Uh, if they were big in the wrestling, WWF, um, Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all big, all big ones. All right. So basically, what I just did was I removed all six screws, flip it over, and top comes right off. Put that up to the side. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow you guys up a little bit. <whistles> Ding! Okay. So this is the insulation shield. This shield right here, you got to make sure you want to put back on it. This stops the interference from uh, your TV. So if you look here, okay, see if I can put... Actually, I'm going to shrink it back down a little bit so you can see what, I, what I'm doing. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. Shrink it back down. So basically, on when you're looking at the unit, you've got one, two, um, there's three right there. Then you got four, five, six, seven screws. This is actually a really easy fix. Um, nothing fancy about it at all. Pretty much all these screws are the same, except for two of them. I'll show you which two that is. I, like I said, I do a ton of these things. This one right here, I've never had a part before. But I have had several Nintendos um, apart. So, in my uh, bedroom, I have two um, TVs. You have to have the old um, tube TVs for these things to work. These will not work on an LED TV with the Zappa gun or the Rob the Robot. So, um, a lot of people, you know, they try to pick up an older unit and think it's going to work on a newer TV, and it's not. It'd be nice, though, but it won't work. Okay, so I'm just removing all the screws I just showed you there, seven screws. And then uh, get those all out. Okay, hold on. Okay. Get a little pin right there. Gonna 
maneuver that out and just keep you know check it make sure there's not on any uh crap on it okay so now we have the loader this is called the loader unit right here okay you have um different screws all over it you got um the silver screw and the gold screw the silver screw is the longer of the two okay so real simple i'm not pulling this board completely out i never do but i'll show you what i do do whole thing pretty cool real easy fix real easy fix okay. really cool and the part for this is really cheap the part to fix these original Nintendo's is right around eight bucks you can get you can pay a little bit more if you need if you have a broken door. If you have the broken door, it'll um, be a little bit more. See, it's a little bit longer of a screw in comparison to the. See, the silver screw's a little longer. So, silver screw's a little longer. Just be careful with them. Okay. Last screw here. Once you get that screw out, then the whole loader area just kind of slides out like that. And then you're stuck with your 72-pin connector. Basically, just walk it out. Get a kind of, it's it's going to be on the tight. Okay, just like so. Okay, that's the 72-pin connector right there. So we're going to take that connector, we're going to throw that out, and then I got a brand new one right here in the box. Brand new, shiny, 72-pin connector. Okay, and that's all there is. Then, you take the 72-pin connector, you put it back in place of where the other one was. Line up your screws. Take the loader. Now the loader part. Let me show. There's no dust in the uh, the bottom part where the sight is. It's like a magnetic hologram part where it locks. No hologram. What am I thinking? It's, it's the locking mechanism. So you want to make sure it's nice and clean. But there's also at the bottom. This part right here goes under the board. If you do it wrong, it won't go under the board. So, sure, it should be sitting flat. Typically, if you take the thing out, it's a little on the easier side, but I don't remove the whole thing. Um, it takes a couple seconds to just, you know, get in there, get it in the groove. Okay, then I just gonna make sure it goes under the board at the top. So, what I mean by that is if you look right here where the loader is, the circuit board. You gotta pull the circuit board up to it and then push it back. Or else it won't it won't go in properly. Okay. Real simple. Locks in there like that. If you don't have that um the loader part under the circuit board, what will happen is when you tighten these two down, this part right here will bend and it won't latch. So you got to make sure you got that, you got that in there, you know. So, um, what do you call it there? You make sure you get that um, latched in there properly. Throw your screws in. You got uh, six screws. Now what I do is I put a couple in. I don't tighten them down because you want to make sure you tighten them down evenly without cracking the board. 
it just makes it's kind of an insurance policy and don't forget your two longer screws your two longer screws this they go right back here but if you look i'll show you put this like this okay see the back screw nope goes in the one in front of it so your two longer screws go in the same place on both sides in the front there and then the regular screws go in the back this is so easy, you can literally do this in a few minutes. Okay, now, once I get these all tightened down, tighten up the screw. Snug them all down. After they're all tight, After they're all tight, then you push on it, make sure it latches. If it stays down when you push on it, that means you got this, you got it in the right spot. Okay? Real cool. All right, shrink it back down this way. And then we'll take the, uh, the metal shield. Fits right on there. There's a couple of alignment pins that it fits right into. You'll learn all kinds of things on my channel, guys. Sometimes I do these extra videos to kind of break up the monotony of just doing straight-up engines all the time, you know? Engines are cool, but some of the subtle stuff is pretty fun as well. You'll be able to pick one of these up at a yard sale and say, Hey, I can fix that. Then you got yourself an original Nintendo. I'll be, don't go and get one of those Chinese ones there that have the... Uh, what you might call it, you know, a thousand games built in. Oh, that's no fun. I collect these things. I collect these. I love Nintendos. I collect games. I love fixing them, playing them. I got my kids into them. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'm looking for a power glove. Someday I'll find one. But if you guys are looking for a Christmas gift for me, I'm into Nintendos. <laughs> oh, there we go. Put that in there like that. Okay. All right. Okay, it's all screwed down. Make sure your wiring is on the uh, front side of that um, mount where the top goes on. And we just throw the top on like so. Flip it upside down. Put the screws in. The next part of the video I'm going to show you, which is going to be really helpful for you, and it's going to protect your Nintendo. So for the rest of this video, I'm just going to throw it in two screws so I can show you. Okay. This way you don't have to uh, be bored by me putting all the six screws into it. I can do those after that. But that is how you replace the 72-pin connector right here on an original NES. Okay. Now, I want to show you guys... You'll see I got ammonia on the side there. Do not clean a cartridge with alcohol. Alcohol will deteriorate the um, the contact pins and it's not good for them. However, ammonia works good. You're not supposed to blow in here. Your saliva gets on that and a couple things happen. Now it's covered with germs and the next person who blows on it is going to receive the germs and you're going to receive the germs from the last person don't do that 
it corrodes the contacts and it makes it it, it just wears out the 72 pin connector even worse because now you got your saliva on there and it's chewing up on these pins take ammonia i used to cap i fill up the cap a little bit okay you don't need much I'm going to show you this. Use a Q-tip. Okay. Get it wet. Go on both sides of the, cute, of the um, circuit board. Look how black that is. That is why this game keeps stalling out. Okay. But you have to replace the 72-pin connector because you already wore it out. That's all kinds of debris and crap. Why is that on there like that? Well, a couple reasons. One... It's out in the, oxy the oxygen. We'll corrode it. Two, remember when you spit on it? Well, now all the dust and dirt and grime is sticking to it. Look at that. So you're going to do that a couple of times until you get a contact on your game that is not so abrasive. Okay? It says getting better. Not much better, but it's getting better. The only downside is this stuff stinks. Okay. That's getting there. See that? So, once you get it clean, let it air dry for a couple of minutes. And that, my friends, is how you clean... A video game. You don't need a special cleaner. The other thing I use on my Nintendos is I use disinfectant wipes to clean them. I don't spray them with any cleaner. I just use a disinfectant wipe. I wipe all the dust off and keep it nice and clean. And the disinfectant wipes seem to work really, really well with keeping the, the dust off of them and all the uh, keeps them nice and shiny and clean. And if you get the lemon scented ones, it takes away that ammonia smell. That's what I use. A great value, which is found at Walmart. This one right here, I think I got either at Walmart or I got it at um, Market Basket. I don't remember which. But that's basically how you repair your original Nintendo to make the light go out, to make it stop blinking. So I hope you find this video informative and informational. On fixing your original NES. Because those right there are the game units to have. Okay? No school like the old school. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, please send them my way. Thank you.